Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to a brand new episode of Dan Richard Fishing and we're back in the garage as you can tell and uh, today we're going to be working on the power trim of my outboard. So you guys might remember, uh, I don't know, maybe a couple of years ago I did a video uh, if your power trim, if your uh, power trim motor was making a bunch of sounds going up and down but nothing was actually moving, you could fill it up with oil, you're probably just lacking a bit of oil. Well, this worked. So when I did that video, I actually added some of this uh, Lucas Oil hydraulic oil booster. So this is actually to help stop the leaking on my trim unit because it was only like a couple of little drops here and there. Uh, and this did it. But unfortunately, this fall, uh, my trim unit started leaking again. The cylinder, the, the seals are gone. Uh, so the responsible thing to do is to get this thing either replaced or repaired. So today I'm going to show you guys how to take it off. Um, and I will be sending mine to a place called Five Star Marine uh, located in Florida they actually rebuild them for five six hundred dollars and it's much cheaper than buying a brand new one which costs twelve hundred dollars uh, and you also get a two-year warranty so I've heard some good things about this company so we're gonna give them a shot and uh, see if we can't get this bad boy out so I've had different feedback as to how long this thing can take there's a series of trilobe and primary pins that we need to remove that could be completely seized up so who knows what we're in for it could take 30 minutes it could take four hours we'll see uh, but as always guys all I ask for in return for putting these videos together is that you smack the like button help me grow the channel and of course make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell notification that way you know every time we do one of these videos uh, which is usually every Thursday but sometimes I cheat and skip you know I'm not feeling too good or whatever but uh, uh, generally once a week we put up a new video all right guys so let's get started now first things first uh, this does apply to most trims they're all generally the same however this is for my mercury power trim uh, so this is for the model 8 m 55011 okay so that is the trim assembly that we'll be pulling off now they do not sell the o-ring kits for this anymore now a lot of people have told me why don't you just rebuild it and do this and do that um, so I was, I've been doing some research and you cannot get the O-ring kits anymore. You have to buy like different kits and then mix and mash it together. And it was almost the same price as just sending it out and having it done professionally anyway. So it's just a lot easier. Some of these you may be able to get the O-ring kit, which makes it a lot easier because then you just buy the O-rings for 30 bucks and you replace it yourself and you're done. This one here was just way too complicated. And of course it was super expensive to buy a new one. It's 1200 bucks plus shipping um, and also used used ones are about $500 so I can get mine rebuilt which I know it's fine it just needs the new o-rings and I get a two-year warranty so it just makes sense so first things first we need to first disconnect power to the power trim uh, so we're going to take the cowl off the motor here and pull that off then we're going to lift the motor up and then that's where we're going to get started and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to spray it with some ProLab PL100 which is just a lubricant it's like liquid wrench I'm going to I'm gonna spray all the pins and the bolts that are gonna come off just to make sure it's loosened up. So I'm gonna spray everything, go have some lunch, and then come back and uh, hopefully we'll get everything off nice and ready, all right? So I suggest you use a lubricating spray to all your pins before you try to remove it because this may save you quite a bit of sweat, blood, and tears. So first things first, we're gonna go ahead and cut off these tie wraps here. And we're gonna go ahead and unbolt this clip that holds the power cable to the trim. And then we're going to go up in here and we're going to have to disconnect it inside the cowl and pull it through and then pull it through here. Now we're ready to uh, disconnect this guy from inside and pull it through. Okay guys, so what I've done here is I've actually taken the side trim pieces off as well to really give me good access uh, to everything under the cowl because I just didn't have it. And I wanted to trace where the wires are. So you can see that the wire comes up here and comes out. Now this is where I couldn't really follow it. It actually goes underneath the engine uh, and out the other side. And I also noticed that there's a second wire that's here um, that you know serves, it's not for the trim, it's another part. But I actually noticed that the wire is damaged in here. It's actually stripped and at one point the wire is exposed. So I'm gonna fix that. And here on the other side, you can actually see the blue and green wires popping out right here. And under here, you can see this that's the cable that goes on the other side. So this, if we were to follow this cable, it goes underneath, out the other side of the engine, and then goes down. So all we need to do is pull these apart, like so. There we go. And there's your connector right there. We're going to pull the other one apart as well. Then we'll fish it back underneath and get it down there. So you can see how it's way under here. So the 
side trim pieces were covering it up completely like this. I couldn't even see this. I couldn't get at it. So that is where it's located on my motor. This is a 50 horsepower, um, four strokes. So it was right, it's underneath the starter right in the bottom there. But like I said, I couldn't get at it until I took the side trim pieces off, which is easy. It's only like five or six bolts. So here you can see the cables here. So we just pull it through and there it pops out. And then we're gonna feed it through the rubber grommet down here out the bottom, we just pull it. Uh, and there's another wire here, like I said, this wire here that's also coming up and plugging into here. I'm not sure what that is. Um, but that guy there, the wire's actually stripped. So I'm gonna pull all this through, fix it, and pass it all back up in here. Okay guys, here you can see what I did. I actually stripped off a little bit of the sheathing here, the black sheathing, that allowed me to give that allowed me to have a little bit more space on my wire. So what I was able to do is push one wire through and then follow it with the second wire. And I just used needle nose pliers. I just used needle nose pliers and I kind of gently grabbed it and pushed it through the hole like that. And there we go, we're good. Okay guys, so we've got that done, ready to go. Wires are here. Now we need to lift the motor and get it out of the way. So we're gonna lift it and we need to lock it in place. Now some motors have a lock so that when it's in the top position, you can lock it. Uh, this one does. If you don't, you'll need to come up with a way to lock it down. Some people use a piece of metal piping. There's different ways of log. There's <laughs> all kinds of stuff you can do. But you should have a locking mechanism. I'll show you on mine how it works. If your trim motor is toast, it's just not working at all, uh, you may need to use the manual release. So inside the hole that's down here, there's actually a manual release in there. And you just use a regular flathead screwdriver and you turn it and that will release the pressure that's in here. But make sure you hold on to this thing because it's going to let go. And once you've opened up that valve, you can freely move the motor up and down as needed. Now mine still works, but uh, I need to help it up because it's got no, you know, actual oil in there. So, uh, so let's go ahead and lift this up spray our contact points that we're going to be working on, uh, let that sit for a few minutes, and then we'll get started and get that trim out of here. Now, just for the sake of lifting the motor, I've taken the wire and I put it around the motor and just reconnected it on the other side. That way it'll let me lift up the engine. But now at least we've got the trim wires out and we can unplug them and we have access to them uh, anytime we want. And here you can actually see the motor stop on mine. It's right here. So this is what the motor, this comes out. It just, you just push and this comes out. And that's what the motor sits on, just like that. All right, guys, now here is what the trim looks like. So this is the trim motor, this is the cylinder, and you can see it connects up in there. And here is the trilobe pin up in here with the main shaft that needs to come out the main pin. There'll be a pin under here as well. And right over here, I just noticed this piece here, uh, which is that second wire we were talking about, this small wire right here. Um, and it's right over where the main pin is. And I think what this is, this has got to be the trim position sensor. So this needs to come off uh, as well. So let's get this off of here. And I'm going to go ahead and spray these points and uh, let the battle begin. We're also going to need to take the zinc anode off the bottom here. So this is what helps prevent corrosion on your trim is this zinc plate that's under here. So that'll need to come off as well. By the way, guys, just a quick little note. If you are taking off your zinc anode off the bottom of your trim motor, and mine is in amazing condition. It doesn't need to be replaced. Actually, mine was just replaced last year. Um, bear in mind that the bolts on, at least on my model, were the opposite, okay, of standard bolts. So in other words, you went counterclockwise to screw it down clockwise to loosen it, okay? And the last thing you wanna do is start wrenching on this clockwise, when uh, counterclockwise when you're gonna take it off and it's getting tighter and tighter and you snap the bolt heads and then you're really in big doo-doo, okay? So just double check on your model. Uh, make sure you double check, does it bolt down the opposite way of normal, okay? So just a little, little note for you. Okay guys, so right here is the first trilobe pin. So I'm just gonna try and see if I can get a screwdriver. Oh, there you go. It's already got a nice gap in it. So I'm just going to see if I can't get some separation. Oh, yeah. Let me get a bigger screwdriver. Oh, yeah. There you go. Might have to get a little breaker bar. Yeah, let me get a breaker bar in here and see if I can get that bar in here, pop it out. Oh, yeah. There you go. 
Oh, that's coming right out of that. Oh yeah. All right, I don't want to mess up the paint here. Let me get a little rag, put in between this and the bar. There we go. There, pins out. There you go. There's the trilobe pin. And now this pit, you can see this is all moving now. So I should be able to just bang this through. Oh yeah, I can actually push it through with my finger. <laughs> there you go. Let's see. There you go. Boom, there you go, there's your pin. All right, first part's done. Sorry guys, the footage I took of this part here, the audio didn't work, but basically what I'm doing is I'm taking a flathead screwdriver and I'm gently tapping down with a hammer on top of the second trilobe pin that pops out the bottom. In this shot here from the other side, you can actually see the trilobe pin is already sticking out about halfway after I've been tapping on it, and you can see the primary pin is sitting inside the housing. And here you can see the trilobe pin popped out, and then I'm just going to go ahead and take a long handled screwdriver and I'm going to put it into this hole here and I'm just going to tap on it with my hand and then the primary pin will pop out the other side. Now if this is seized up you may need to use a long punch and really give it some good smacks but mine just came out beautifully. And once again here's a shot of the trilobe pin coming out and the primary pin in place. And here you can see the trilobe pin is out as well as the main pin. All right, let's go ahead and pull our wires out. Oh, there we go, all right. <laughs> well, that came off. So it looks like you don't need to take this bracket off at all. I thought this whole bracket had to come out from the instructions I read, but looks like it doesn't. All right, guys, there you have it. Trim has been removed. That wasn't too bad. Um, a little bit of confusion on my part, because like I said, I've read about how to do this and I've seen videos on how to do it. And it was showing how to, you had to remove the three bolts from both sides of the trim bracket. But as it turns out for this particular model anyway, you absolutely did not need to do that, which actually made it easier. But now that I've got the trim off, I am gonna go ahead and take off the bracket uh, and get that all cleaned up because it's full of oil and grease and grime. So I'm gonna take all that apart, I'm gonna clean it all up and get it all nice and fresh. So all we need to do now is get the little nylon nut off of here and that is where the oil fill is. We'll empty this out, clean it all up, uh, box it up, and uh, this week we'll ship it off to Five Star Marine and uh, see how that process goes. So this is kind of gonna be an interesting update as well because I'll let you know of their service and how that went uh, and hopefully everything goes nice and smooth. It's only supposed to take a week once they receive it. So hopefully we'll get this back in time for the end of March to be installed for the pre-spawn walleye bite, which would be awesome. So that's it. We're gonna clean this up, bag it, and get it out of here. So that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed today's very simple episode. This was really easy to take off actually. The most difficult part, to be honest, was having to take the cowl and all the sides off in order to access the plugs to pull apart for the, uh, for the wiring for the trim motor. That was actually the hardest, it was kind of silly, but that was the most difficult part. But once we got that off, the rest is a breeze. So I hope you guys found this helpful and you saw that it's actually not that difficult to take these things off. I think the key is really to make sure you prep yourself well, make sure you spray all the joints, everything is well lubricated and everything will move as easy as possible because I mean I've seen guys going at it with punches on those master pins on those main primary pins slamming away on it and I mean when we were done we could just push it through with our finger and you know this has been there since 2005 so it's not exactly a brand new motor either so anyway we were fortunate to get it done pretty easily so uh, glad to do it and uh, yeah so I hope you guys found it helpful as always guys make sure you like subscribe hit the bell notification if you enjoyed this kind of content and uh, there will be more to come and I'll keep you guys updated on the progress of our trim motor all right Take it easy guys, have a good one, peace.